the Johnson Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. <laughs> Makers of Johnson's Wax Products for Home and Industry present Fibber McGee and Molly with Bill Thompson, Gail Gordon, Arthur Q. Bryan, and me, Harlow Wilcox. The script is by Don Quinn and Phil Leslie. Music by the Kingsmen and Billy Mills Orchestra. Say, tell me, have you sent in for your personal car initials? The makers of Johnson's Wax want you to try the famous car polish, Johnson's Car New. So to listeners who buy car new, they're sending two sets of personal car initials, tastefully designed and striking gold color half an inch high. They give your car a smart personal touch. Only take a minute to apply. Let me tell you how to get your two sets of personal car initials. One set of three initials for each side of your car. First, buy some Johnson's car new. Then send the sales slip or the name of the dealer from whom you bought your car new, together with a stamped self-addressed envelope to Fibber McGee and Molly, Racine, Wisconsin. If you live in Canada, address your request for initials to Fibber McGee and Molly, Brantford, Ontario. Print clearly which initials you want, any three, and get your request in the mail right away for your two sets of handsome gold-colored decal car initials. Get some Johnson's Car New tomorrow, sure. Car New is spelled C-A-R-N-U. Now, I'll repeat the instructions. Buy some Johnson's Car New. Send the sales slip or the name of the dealer from whom you bought the car new, together with a stamped, self-addressed envelope to Fibber McGee and Molly, Racine, Wisconsin. June, as the song has it, is busting out all over. The rich are varnishing their yachts, the poor are laughing at the coal dealer, and the great middle classes are planning picnics, like Fibber McGee and Molly. Now, let me see. I have the sandwiches, the pickles, the cake, and the bananas. Did you put the root beer in the car, McGee? Three big fat cases of it, kiddo. Nothing like a big mug full of root beer to wash down a sandwich. And speaking of a big mug full of root beer, is Doc Gamble coming on the picnic? <laughs> Well, I haven't been able to get in touch with him. Mm, if he puts on any more weight, he won't be able to get in touch with himself. <laughs> you leave word at his office? I left invitations at his office, at the hospital, at his home, and at the county jail. Well, they ought to... <laughs> at the county jail? Yes, I thought they might call him in on a consultation. Huh? Yeah, there's an epidemic down there, you know. There, in, in the jail? What kind of an epidemic? Hacksaws, I believe. <laughs> Hacksaws are tools, not a disease. Oh, I guess I misunderstood. The paper just said that five prisoners had broken out with hacksaws. <laughs> Must have been a dumb bunch of guys. You could kick your way out of that who's got with moccasins on. Badly constructed, is it? <laughs> Badly constructed. Anytime you can't stick your finger through a wall, it's because the sheriff is on the other side leaning against it. <laughs> I always wondered that why... That building is so damp, the deputies made 3000 bucks last year trapping lobsters in the basement. Why, it's... Hey, you putting some of those oatmeal cookies in Yes, there? dearie. Now let me see. I have salt and pepper, knives and forks and spoons. How about oyster forks? Oyster forks at a pick... Well, how else are we going to get the pickles out of the bottle? Last year, I sprained both forefingers and couldn't use my typewriter for ten days. Oh, well. Never could use it, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Bye, George. I've meant... Come in. <laughs> Hello there, daughter. Hello, Johnny. What are you doing? Packing stuff for a picnic, old-timer. Picnic, eh? Yeah. I used to be in great demand for picnics when I was a youngster kid. Yeah? The only feller in town could build a campfire scientific. How did you build a campfire scientific? Well, sir. <laughs> well, sir, Johnny, an old Indian showed me the secret. Oh. You take and dig a little trench in the ground, see? Mm -hmm. And you get some dry hickory twigs, sassafras leaves, and gum off in a pine tree. Uh -huh. You build a little pyramid out of the twigs, lay the gum on top, spread the leaves around, then lay a log onto it. Yeah? Then you drench it with kerosene and aim a blowtorch at it. <laughs> Never fails. <laughs> Another good way is tie a lightning rod on a pile of dynamite and wait for a thunderstorm. <laughs> 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 That's pretty good.
good, Johnny, but that ain't the way I heard it. <laughs> the way I heard it, one feller says to tell the feller, say, he says, I see where England has finally decided what to do with India. Is that so, says the feller. What are they going to do with it? Just what everybody told them to, says the first feller. Give it back to the Indians. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, may not be funny, kids, but it's topical. <laughs> Say, would you care to come on this picnic with us, Mr. Oldtimer? No, oh, you're sweet, daughter, but no thanks. You know what I always say? Fresh air's all right if you don't inhale. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just dropped in to say howdy. 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 Silly, wasn't it? Sometimes, uh, Mickey, what are you doing? I'm looking for my two-headed half-dollar. You seen my two-headed half-dollar any place? You mean that trick half-dollar that's the same on both sides? Yeah. What do you want that for? Well, I may want to flip a coin with Wilcox to see who collects the firewood. <laughs> Doggone it, I had that two-headed half-dollar around here someplace. I Come in. Know. Oh, hello, Dr. Gamble. Hello, Molly. Hi, Splint Whittler. Good day, short, dark, and repugnant. Ooh. <laughs> Thanks for inviting me to the picnic. Welcome. Looks like a very happy lunch you have there, Molly. Oh, I think there'll be plenty of everything, Doctor. And as long as you were going to be along, I tried to have a balanced meal. Deviled eggs and angel food cake. <laughs> Tell me, do they have picnic tables at Dugan's Lake, or do we just sit around on the broken glass? Oh, they have tables, Doctor. Are you going to swim? Yes, I think I might. Great exercise, swimming. Takes it off in the right places and puts it on in the right places. <laughs> You must have done most of your swimming at night when the best places were hard to find. Ah, McGee, don't be so insulting. That's all right, Molly. Did you ever notice that everybody at Dugan's Lake gets out the fishing tackle when McGee goes swimming? Hmm? They want to go after the fish while they're still laughing. <laughs> what time is this picnic, by the way? Four o'clock, Doc. I'll be there. I have a financial as well as a sentimental interest in that lake. Oh? Yeah, I dropped three souvenir $20 gold pieces off the dock last year. Nobody was able to recover them. I'll see you out there. <laughs> three $20 gold pieces, eh? Doc lost them off the end of the dock, eh? Well, anything that mug can lose, I can find. Where's my swimming trunk? Now, you take it easy, dearie. You're not a very good diver, you For know. For 60 bucks, I'll bring up the Lusitania. <laughs> Come on, let's be the first ones at Dugan's Lake. Oh, brother, I can use 60 bucks like Brittle can use peanuts. Get your hat, kiddo. I got the basket. You grab the ant powder. Come on, let's go. We got to... Billy Mills in the orchestra and Cecilia. <laughs> Thank you. 
wish you'd had time to buy a new bathing suit, McGee. Those swimming trunks of yours are pretty moth-eaten. I know, but I got a sentimental attachment for them trunks. I saved a guy's life while I was wearing those. Really? Whose? Mine. <laughs> they fit so bad, I didn't want to go buy any hamburger, so I swam on my empty stomach. <laughs> Otherwise, I might have got cramps and drowned on... Yes, sir, I was... Oh, stop, McGee. There's Wallace Wimple. We told him we'd pick him up, you know. Oh. Ah, Got to get them brakes fixed. Well, hop in, Wimple, old man. Hello, Mr. Wimple. Hello, folks. <laughs> My, we're glad you could come on this picnic, Mr. Wimple. Yeah, how'd you get away from Sweetie Face for the day, Wimp? You mean my big old wife? <laughs> yes, did she object to your going on the picnic, huh? What could she do, Mrs. McGee? I just put my foot down. My gosh. At last, eh? You really put your foot down, Mr. Wimple. Yes, I did. I put my foot down and waited. And nothing happened. Then I put my other foot down and nothing happened. So I just dropped out of the tree and ran like everything. <laughs> What were you doing up in the tree in the first place, Wimp? Reading my bird book. Your what, Mr. Wimple? My bird book. And the silliest thing happened while I was sitting up in that tree. Yeah? A little bird flew up and squatted down on my head like it was a big egg. <laughs> it was so cute. <laughs> what kind of a bird was it, Wimp? That was the silly part of it, Mr. McGee. I looked it up in my bird book... And it was an Arkansas nut hatch. <laughs> Did I ever tell you about the feeding habits of the green wing Montana twiddle? Twiddle? Yes. A twiddle is like the South Dakota duck billed gillfinch, except it has wing flaps. Oh. Well, during the mating season, which is from February to January, the twiddle eats nothing but radishes, and when it sings, it sounds like, Eek, pardon me, Eek, pardon me, Eek, pardon me. <laughs> The female twiddle has a great name. Oh, dear. Uh, Got to get them brakes fixed. Well, here we are, Mr. Wimple. I guess we're the first ones here. You kids take the lunch over to the table. I'm going to slip my pants off in the car on account of I got my swimming trunks on underneath, on underneath my pants on. <laughs> you going to swim, Wimp? No, I don't think so, Mr. McGee. Oh. But if somebody will keep an eye on me, I might wade a little. <laughs> I'll uh, hang on to the end of your necktie, Mr. Wimple. Say, will you please help me with these baskets? Certainly, Mrs. McGee. I'll take this one and you take that one. There's three cases of root beer in the back, Wimp. I'll be with you as soon as I take a quick plunge. Mm. My, these baskets are heavy, aren't they, Mr. McGee? Mm. Maybe if I ate a few sandwiches out of them. Oh, these no, days. no, Mr. Wimple. Not till everybody else gets here. Here, let me help you with that stuff, Molly. Hello, Wally. Hello, Mr. Wilcox. Glad you could come. Me, too. Uh, you can take this basket, Harlow. Just put it on the table over there. Oh, okay. <clears throat> you know, this picnic was a wonderful idea. I always think that... First, Fibber. Well, he's in the trunk of the car putting on his back seat. What? <laughs> oh, wasn't that silly of me? <laughs> he's in the back seat putting on his trunk. <laughs> he wants to take a plunge before we eat. That's peculiar. When did he start feeling so athletic? I've been on picnics with him before, and he usually... Hey, just... here I come. Watch this dive off the end of the dock. One side, everybody. Ah! I didn't hear any splash. That must be a very high dock. Or maybe he didn't know there was a rowboat tied right under the end of it. <laughs> a rowboat? Heavenly days, why, the that poor man... That dad ratted lame brain that tied this boat down here, I'd like to bust in my neck. That's what it was, the rowboat. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Isn't this a wonderful day for a picnic? Can you think of anything more beautiful, Mr. Wilcox, than a lunch in the open with the blue sky overhead and the green grass underfoot? Yes. What, Hilo? Eating in an immaculate kitchen with a ceiling overhead and a gleaming Johnson's glow coated linoleum underfoot. That's beauty to me. Ah! <laughs> you mean you'd rather... 
rather eat in a stuffy kitchen than out here at lovely Dugan's Lake, Mr. Wilcox? Why, sure. A modern kitchen isn't stuffy anyway. And with glow coat brightening and beautifying the floor, it's the pleasantest room in the house. To me, the nicest room in the house is the hollow space under the front porch. Sweetie Face can't reach me, dear. Why, I often tell my customers, Wallace, that serving a meal in a kitchen that has a glow-coated linoleum is a picnic. Just as informal, just as cheerful. And if you spill something, you don't have to kick dirt over it or hide it under an empty carton. You just wipe it up with a damp cloth. Yeah, but I always say hey, that you can... Hey, did you see that last guy? Cleans a hound's tooth, huh? Let's say as clean as a glow-coated linoleum. Huh? Why, when a housewife pours a little Johnson self-polishing glow coat out and spreads it around... Hey, hey, hey. Waxy, please, take a day off, will you? <laughs> this is a picnic, not a sales conference. Well, I was just saying that... Yes, Mr. Wilcox, I'm sure Racine won't mind if you relax a few minutes. No. Oh. After all, you'll have to get used to having Fred Waring and Bill Bivens handle it this summer anyway. Ooh, goody. Fred Waring and Bill Bivens. <laughs> I just love Fred's music. I wish he was on for Johnson's Wax right now. Did I say something wrong? You just bit the hand that's going to feed you, that's all. Right? Hey, have I got time for a few more dives before we eat, Molly? Well, Dr. Gamble and Mayor Latrivia aren't here yet, dearie. Okay, I'll try a few more. Watch this one. Hey, did you see that? He landed on his stomach and bounced. <laughs> He certainly stays underwater a long time, doesn't he? Oh, yes, yes. He's learned to hold his breath for 13 weeks at a time, Mr. Wimple. <laughs> Options, you know. <laughs> oh, here comes Mayor Latrivia. You, Mr. Mayor, over here. Who's that with him? Oh, it's the little girl who lives across the street from you. Hello, Your Honor. Hello, Teeny. Hello, hello. Hi. Hello, Molly. Hello, Wimple. Well, now that everybody's here but Dr. Gamble, I guess I better go start the lunch. Huh? I'll help you, Molly. So will I. Stay and eat with us if you like, Teeny. There's plenty of everything. I told you you'd be invited if you walked in here with me, Teeny. I'm the Elsa Maxwell of the picnic ground. Uh. <laughs> well, gee, it does look like you need more women at this party. <laughs> oh. <laughs> What's that, a big fish? <clears throat> That's a matter of opinion, Teeny. <laughs> Mr. McGee just over off the end of the dock. Oh, gee, this is going to be fun, I bet you. I love picnics, Mr. Honor. <laughs> Not Mr. Honor, Tweeny, uh, your honor. My honor? No, no, my honor. You say your honor when you address me. Okay, my honor. <laughs> no, no, look, you don't understand. The chief executive of the city is called his honor, the mayor. Oh. Personally, I'd just as soon be called Mr. Latrivia, but custom decrees that I be spoken to as Your Honor or Mr. Mayor. You understand? Well, I... <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, I'll try to make it a little clearer. Now then, suppose you were the mayor of Wistful Vista. All right. Now, the first thing we got to do is have longer recess in the schools, I bet you. And then we got to give my teacher, Miss Yegley, a raise on account of she's so nice to little children. And then you Now, know... just a minute, please, Tina. This was just a temporary appointment. Oh. Purely hypothetical, for the sake of argument. Okay, Indian giver. <laughs> if you were the mayor, I'd come up to you and say, Ah, oh, there, good morning, Your Honor. As it is, you say the same thing to me. I can't, I bet you. Why not? It isn't morning, it's afternoon. That's beside the point. I was merely trying to... <laughs> Mr. McGee died. Did you hear that splash, Mr. Honor? It is not Mr. Honor. It's Mr. Mayor. It is not, I bet you. It's Mr. McGee. I saw him when he jumped in. <laughs> I didn't mean who I am. I mean, I didn't honor the man who jumped into the mayor. Oh, no. <laughs> now, now, give it a chance, Mr. Honor. You addressed me as Mr. Dive. Honor. <laughs> and the man who McGee into the splash, oh. the sergeant, I would... You said... Uh. <laughs> Teeny? Yes, Mr. Honor? When you grow up, if ever, you will be... Oh, wait, here comes Mr. McGee, Mr. Honor. <laughs> oh, oh, boy, are those ever funny-looking bathing trunks, I bet you. <laughs> Hi, Mr. McGee. Hi, Teeny. 
Oh, hi, Latrev. When did you get here? Just a few minutes ago. Oh. I took the liberty of bringing this little... <clears throat> this young lady. Oh. I hope you don't mind. Oh, my gosh, no. Sis, you're as welcome as the flowers in June. June was the name of a goat I had once. <laughs> She ate a dozen roses, and it was a great improvement. <laughs> Thanks, Miss McGee. I just love picnics. Oh, you do, eh? Yes, I'm... Hmm? I says you do, eh? Do what? Love them. Love well, what? Picnic. I know it. <laughs> hey, where'd you get those bathing trunks, mister? Where'd you get them? Hmm. I was about to ask the same question, McGee. They seem to have a drape shape with a slack back and a drip hip. Yeah. These are my old track pants, Latrivia. I've clung to them like they're clinging to me right now. And just because I made the mistake of hanging them up for 20 years by the seat, that, hey, hey, is that safety pin still in there where I tore them a little bit? Sure it is, mister. It hardly shows unless somebody notices well, it. Well, I was about to suggest that All you be... All right, everybody. Soup's on. Come and get it. Swell. I got a great appetite. Run and get the blanket out of the car, will you, Teeny? I don't want to catch cold in these wet trunks. Okay, mister. Uh, McGee, before you sit down, huh? that safety pin, did you get congressional authority for that? Congressional authority? What has Congress got to do with the safety pin in my swimming trunks? Rent control. Oh. Come in, my <laughs> King's Men and O Eveline. O Eveline, my Eveline. Oh, whisper to me, honey, you'll be mine. Way down yonder in the old cornfield for you, I pine. Sweet little honey, to the honeybee. I love you, say you love me. Meet me in the shade of the old apple tree. Heavy, 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 heavy Eveline. Oh, Eveline, be mine. was the best picnic supper these tired old teeth ever got together on. <laughs> well, thank you, Doctor. I was afraid for a while you weren't going to come. What delayed you, Fever Chart? Somebody tried to sneak out of the hospital without giving you his gold filling? No, one of the nurses asked me to remove a small wart that was bothering her. Oh, oh really? How'd you treat the wart, Doc? With considerable respect. Huh? His father is our wealthiest patient. <laughs> I have another piece of that cake, Molly? Why, certainly, Doctor. As soon as Mr. Wilcox and Mr. Wimple and Teeny get back with some firewood, we'll make a fire and roast marshmallows, huh? No, you go ahead. But I'm going in the lake again in a few minutes, as soon as I think it's safe after eating. My boy, after what you stowed away, you are liable to get cramps in anything better than a heavy fog up until April of 1967. <laughs> Furthermore, oh, I Oh, here think... come the boys and Teeny with some firewood. Bring it right over here, everybody. Here's mine, Molly. Dump it right here. That's right, and thank you. It's quite a hefty batch of kindling, Junior. What'd you tear down, a boathouse? Oh, look how much I got, everybody. 
anybody. Well, good for you, Teeny. That's wonderful. Just drop it on the pile there. Okay. Well, now, that's what I call firewood. And cut to just the right length, too. Where'd you find it, Teeny? Oh, I was just lucky, I guess. <laughs> there was a truck parked over there with a lot of this wood on it. Oh, I see. <laughs> you better start the fire quick. Hey, where's Wimple with his wood? Uh, here I come, Mr. McGee. Uh, look out, everybody. Right. I'm going to dump it. Uh, right on the pile there, Mr. Wimple. <laughs> Am I tired? Are there any more sandwiches? <laughs> sandwiches? Great Scott. He's already eaten enough to see the Turkish army through four campaigns. Well, if somebody will build a fire, we can roast the marshmallows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody build a fire. I'm going to take a dip in the lake. Watch this dive, everybody. Here I go. <laughs> I never saw a man so enthusiastic about diving. What goes with him, Molly? Well, I... I suppose he has his reasons, Mr. Wilcox. I have a theory about it. People have been telling him to go soak his head for so many years, he finally caught on. <laughs> oh, well, gee, maybe he just likes to swim, maybe, huh? Nobody could like to swim the way he does, Teeny. Oh? He fancies he's doing the Australian crawl because he's down under so much. <laughs> well, he works hard. After all, he's made 57 dives that I've counted. Four of them good. My goodness, he's awfully quiet. Why, of course he is. He's underwater, looking around. Looking for what? Well, frankly, he's trying to find some gold pieces Dr. Gamble lost off the dock last year. Gold oh, pieces? Oh, 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 that's very amusing, Molly. He's got the right idea, but the wrong dock. I lost him off the one at the other end of the lake. <laughs> <laughs> well, my goodness, I'm going down and tell him he's wasting his time. I'll go with you. I want to see his face. And it's the first time I ever said that. <laughs> come on, come on. Let's go down and break the news to him and ruin his day. Ah, no, <laughs> oh, poor McGee, and he's been working so hard at it. McGee, dearie, where are you? I'm down here, under the dock. Why? We've got news for you, Bluegill. <laughs> Doc lost his gold pieces at the other end of the lake. So what? I quit looking for them gold pieces 15 minutes ago. Well, then what are you looking for, McGee? I'm looking for my swimming trunk. Oh. This is ridiculous. I suppose a lot of you folks have seen the famous Broadway play, Life with Father. Well, next Saturday night, this hilarious stage comedy will break the world's record for long runs. Do you know how the property manager keeps the stage furniture and settings in Life with Father bright and shining? You guessed it. He uses our old friend Johnson's Wax. The property man says, boy, is Life with Father ever hard on furniture. When we're on the road, it's just as if I moved my household every few days. The only reason our set looks so well is because we treat it well. We wax it regularly with Johnson's Wax. Before the curtain goes up, we give the furniture a final quick dusting, and even in the glaring spotlights, the set always looks clean and shining. Unquote. Well, there you are, another polished performance for genuine Johnson's Wax. Everywhere you go, you find this grand product protecting and adding sparkling beauty to all kinds of floors, furniture, and woodwork. America's favorite, Johnson's Wax, paste, liquid, or cream. Very kind of the boys to take you out of the lake in a blanket, McGee. No, well, I could have found my trunks if they'd left me alone. I'd barely got started. <laughs> You'd what got started? Barely. Mm-hmm. <laughs> huh? Oh, oh, yeah. Good night. Good night, all. <laughs> This is Harlow Wilcox, speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax products for home and industry, inviting you to be with us again next Tuesday night. Good night.